So we'll, uh, um, we'll have class on the psychotropic drugs. There are four classes, okay? Uh, we have to complete on this uh, four classes. So let us start. Okay, okay, again, good morning to everyone. Okay, good morning everyone. So um, today we are going to, yeah. Okay. So today we are going to discuss on psychotropic drugs. Okay, psychotropic drugs. These are the drugs that are being used for the psychiatric illness. Okay, and psychiatric illness means usually uh, they are illness about the you know, thought. Okay, behavior. Okay, and having a uh, different. Uh, on perceptions like hallucination, delusions, okay? So first, let's say, okay, uh, what is psychotropic drugs? These are the drugs that are primary, um, that has primary effect on the psychotic symptoms, okay? With a variety of conditions like schizophrenia, mania, okay? And then my um, bipolar disorder, psychotic depressions, okay? Um, various organic psychosis, even drug induced psychosis, anxiety, and sleep disturbance, uh, disturbances. Okay, so psychiatric illness. These are the um, distortions of the thought behavior. Okay, and uh, they have uh, inability to uh, recognize the reality <coughs> and of perceptions. Okay, um, so schizophrenia means it is the type of psychosis in which there is a severe personality changes and thought disorder. Okay, uh, mania. The type of mood disorder in which there is a patient having a irritable mood, okay, bipolar disorder, okay, having um, a, a cyclic um, uh, disorder of depressions and mania, okay, then other organic psychosis, okay, we, with uh, some um, uh, cell damage on the brain, okay, having causing the psychotic symptoms. There can be a drug in the psychosis, anxiety, and also. These drugs are also used in cases of where there is a sleep disturbances. So there are mainly two terminology that is given: psychosis and neurosis. Okay, psychosis means again in, in which there is a serious distortion of thought, behavior, capacity to react, recognize reality, and of perceptions, have intelligence, and hallucination. Okay, so here there is an inexplicable. A misconception okay that unexplained type of means misconception and misevaluations are seen with these type of patients and they are not able to meet the ordinary demand of the life okay whereas neurosis this is a this is a lesser serious type of uh, psychiatric illness with uh, having ability to comprehend the reality okay this uh, in neurosis usually uh, the patients will the uh, ability to comprehend reality is not Lost. Okay, so though the patients undergo extreme suffering, so we'll you will see with the example. Okay, you'll understand with the example. Like in psychosis, as they have said, okay, the patients is unable to meet the ordinary demand of life. Whereas neurosis, they are they um is a ability the ability of the country in the where real reality is not lost. Okay, like for example in psychosis. Okay is acute or chronic organic uh, brain syndrome, okay, where there is a damage of brain causing cognitive disorder. And then there is a functional disorders where there is no cause of brain damage like schizophrenia, okay, paranoid states and mood or disorder in which there is mania, depression and bipolar disorder, okay. So in there is anxiety, <coughs> phobic states, okay, Obsessive compulsive disorder, <coughs> reactive dis depression, post traumatic stress disorder, and hysterical. Okay, so um, uh, organic brain syndrome means okay, there is a damage in the brain causing this cognitive disorder, schizophrenia again with a um, severe personality changes, okay, and thought disorder, uh, having delusions and uh, hallucinations, okay, paranoid 
Um, states means again the person's uh, feeling of uh, something that there is an irrational type of feeling or persistent feeling of that having you know, someone to get you again. Okay? Uh, and in there are different types of mood or disorder like mania, okay, with the irritable mood, depression with, with a sad mood, okay, and bipolar disorder having cyclic changes of <clears throat> mania and depression, okay. So this in this type of uh, um, psychiatric illness, okay, the patient is unable to meet the ordinary demand of the life. They cannot comprehend with the reality, okay. Neurosis, okay, the uh, there is no loss of the um, ability of the patients to comprehend with the reality, like anxiety, okay. Then um, phobic acid, okay, uh, feeling of fear, okay, and then obsessive compulsive disorder, like having mental illness that <coughs> with certain thoughts of repetitive uh, repetitive thoughts that is called obsessive and compulsive means actions to perform this or uh, repeated actions okay that is the compulsive disorder that is the obsessive compulsive disorder then there is a reactive depressions okay reactive um, so um, most of us also have felt depressions in some <coughs> uh, Cause okay, like for example, if uh, someone has uh, some close relatives has uh, when there is a death in the uh, close relatives, okay, or uh, uh, again if there is some problem in the work or in the school, okay, or in the college, or uh, again the failing or uh, failing of some or passing the exam, that can have a uh, depression or sad mood, okay. That is called the reactive depressions. But it is those type of depressions is not we cannot compare with the psychosis, okay. Um, which does not comprehend with the reality. <clears throat> then again, uh, in neurosis, we have got post-traumatic stress disorder after the trauma, okay, the feeling of stress, and there is a hysterical <coughs> conditions. Hysterical means, again, showing the extreme type of uncontrolled emotions, okay, that is called the hysterical. So you can see there are different types of psychiatric illness, which is for the the psychosis and neurosis. So what are the psychotropic drugs? <clears throat> so these psychotropic drugs, okay, they are the broad category of the drugs that mainly treat the different psychiatric illness, okay, uh, and they work mainly by adjusting the different chemical mediators, okay, or neurotransmitters that is present in the brain, like for example, dopamine, serotonin, okay, norepinephrine. Um, these are the different chemical uh, neurotransmitters that is present in the brain. So these psychotropic drugs, they adjust this level in, in the brain and thus cause the symptoms of the different um, psychiatric illness, okay. So psychotropic drugs, they are grouped according to the um, treatment for the different psychiatric illness, like for example, antipsychotic drugs, okay, these are the drugs mainly used for the schizophrenia. They are also known as neuroleptic uh, drugs, uh, ataractic drugs or major tranquilizer, okay. So neuroleptic, um, ataractic, okay, or tranquilizer, they all uh, have the same meaning, like they mainly cause the, um, <coughs> decrease the stress or uh, they cause the calmness, okay. The tranquilizer word, they were, they were previously used, okay. Nowadays they are not used as a, uh, these drugs are not used as a tranquilizer. Uh, tranquilizer mainly means these are the drugs that mainly reduce the mental tension, okay, and cause the calmness. Um, so, um, antipsychotic drugs, they are also called major tranquilizer, whereas uh, anti-anxiety drugs, they are called minor tranquilizer, okay. Uh, then we have got antimaniac drugs, which are also known as mood stabilizer, mainly used in cases of mania. Antidepressants drug, mainly used for the depression and other different types of neurosis conditions, okay. Uh, Anti-anxiety drugs used in anxiety. And then there is a psychomimetic uh, drugs, also known as psychedelic, okay, psycholeptic and hallucinogens. They are not used for the um, therapeutic purposes, but we should know some of the psychomimetic drugs that can mimic the, the state of psychosis, okay, and they are mainly of the, uh, as for the drug abuse, okay, like for example, cannabis, LSD, okay, that you will be, I, I think you will be taught again in the drug abuse, okay, in which there are psychomimetic drugs also. 
So, as for psychotropic drugs, we'll mainly discuss on the antipsychotic drugs, antimanic drugs, antidepressants drug, and anti-anxiety drugs. Okay? So, we'll start with the antipsychotic drugs. So, you may be asked in the exam, okay, name antipsychotic drugs or neuroleptic drugs, okay? Uh, so, you must know it's the same, okay? Neuroleptics and antipsychotic drugs. Similarly, mood stabilizer drug or antimanic drugs or drugs for bipolar disorder, okay? Then uh, anxiety drugs or angiolytic drugs, okay? So they are similar synonyms, similar um, name, okay? So now let's start with the antipsychotic drugs. So drugs that are given for the uh, schizophrenia. So with the classification, of drugs, okay. So it has been classified according to chemical structures of having a phenothiazens group of drug uh, in which aliphatic chains are the chlorpromazine and trifluoromazine, okay. On um, piperidine, uh, phenothiazene uh, having piperidine side chain, thiodazine, okay. Similarly, having piperazine uh, side chain, trifluoromazine and flufenazine. On um, beta-rophenones, we have got haloperidol, trifluoromazine, and Penflu, penflu Then we have got thiazanthines, okay, flufen thiazil, thiazol. In others, we have other heterocyclics. We have got pimozide, loxapine, and levosulfide. And as for atypical antipsychotics, okay, we have got clozapine, presperidone, olanzapine, quetiapine, eripiprazole, dupracetone, amisulpride, and dotypine. Okay. So these are the atypical antipsychotic drugs. Whereas um, this, whereas this phenothiazines, okay, um, beta-rophenones, thiazanthines, and heterocyclics, these are the typical antipsychotic drugs. So before going to the drugs, okay, let's just discuss in brief about the schizophrenia and its pathophysiology, okay, and then we'll go with the drugs. Schizophrenia, it is a type of functional psychosis in which severe personality changes occurs and there is a thought disorder uh, which occurs with no evidence of organic cerebral damage, okay. So there is, it's a functional psychosis with the severe personality changes. The symptoms of schizophrenia has divided into positive symptoms and negative symptoms. Okay, so in positive symptoms, uh, usually there is a presence of delusions, okay, which of, uh, in which the person will believe that something is, uh, um, there is a, a strong belief, okay, that is not real, okay, and then illusions, okay, distortion of the senses, okay, then uh, hallucination, mainly in schizophrenia, there is auditory hallucinations, okay, there is a perception of, um, uh, which is uh, actually not present, okay, then thought disorder with irrational conclusions, okay, garbled sentences, okay, garbled sentences means without any um, meaning, okay, or not understanding the words, okay, stereotyped or at time there is a aggressive behavior okay so these are the positive symptoms of the schizophrenia then there is a negative sy uh, symptoms in which patient will have introvert behavior okay then Poor socialization, okay. Introvert means only thinking of their internal thoughts, okay. Um, then uh, poor socialization, okay. Then emotional blunting, lack of motivations and cognitive deficits, okay. Like for example, lack of attention and loss of uh, memory. So these are the negative symptoms of schizophrenia. So for the diagnosis of this. Uh, uh, schizophrenia, we usually go with the uh, symptoms or history taking of the patients, okay? And by history taking and by observing the patients, we categorize of the symptoms as a positive symptoms and negative symptoms. And according to that, we have to uh, give the 
drugs or antipsychotic drugs. Okay. Now, as for uh, pathophysiology, physiology, usually there is a high um, uh, there is a high belief that there is an inheritance of the schizophrenia with a um, uh, inheritance uh, that can account for at least some of portion of the schizophrenic disorder. Okay, so in family history, if there is a schizophrenic history, there is a high chances of uh, having in the offspring also having the schizophrenia. Okay, and apart from that, the other uh, hypothesis that is given, okay, with the abnormal in the amine neurotransmitter functions like dopamine hypothesis, okay, serotonin hypothesis, and glutamate hypothesis. So, uh, as for dopamine hypothesis, okay, in schizophrenia, uh, schizophrenia um, there is suggestion that there is an excessive dopaminergic activity that causes the schizophrenia, okay. So there is a excessive dopaminergic activity in the brain that can lead to the schizophrenia. Okay, so dopamine receptors they are mainly D1, D2, D3, D4, and D5. Okay, and typical antipsychotic drugs they mainly bind to the uh, D2 receptors. Okay, and whereas atypical they can bind to um, other receptors like serotonin receptors, D4 receptors, alpha 1, and histamine receptors, and they have got little effect on the D2 and D1 receptors. So there are different uh, dopaminergic pathways that is present in the brain. Okay, um, these are the main important uh, two pathways that is related with the pharmacological point of view. Okay, so. Um, this is the mesolimbic, mesocortical, mesofrontal pathway, which is the dopaminergic uh, pathway that projects from substantia nigra to limbic system, and that con mainly controls the behavior. Okay, so uh, this dopaminergic pathway it has been uh, seen uh, overactive in cases of schizophrenia. Okay, and so most of the antipsychotic drugs which uh, they blocks the D2 receptors in this pathway. Similarly, nigrostatal pathway, actually this uh, pathway, they, it, uh, this uh, dopaminergic pathway, it, it projects from the substantia nigra to caudic nucleus and putamine, okay? They mainly controls the voluntary movement through extrapyramidal uh, system, okay? So, uh, antipsychotic drugs, okay, they uh, blocks the D2 receptors in this uh, mesolimbic uh, um, uh, dopaminergic pathway that has an antipsychotic effect, but also it uh, blocks the D2 receptors in other dopaminergic pathway causing uh, extra pyramidal symptoms because of the blocking of the uh, dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra that projects from the substantia nigra to caudate nucleus and putamine, okay, that is in the basal ganglia causing the extra pyramidal symptoms. So there are many other um, dopaminergic pathway in the brain also uh, in which the this antipsychotic um, drugs or dopaminergic uh, having the uh, blocking of the dopaminergic uh, receptors okay dopamine receptors causing the other uh, actions also okay so that was about the dopaminergic hypothesis okay now with the serotonin hypothesis um, uh, so So serotonin receptors, okay, they mainly the 5ST2A receptors, they modulate the re release of the dopamine in the mesolimbic and stratum region, okay. So it was found that a typical antipsychotics drug, they are more to potent toward the serotonin receptors and they block these receptors and decrease the dopamine actions, okay. So that is how they also has the antipsychotic action. So it was... Uh, um, in schizophrenia, this hypothesis, serotonin hypothesis, was also postulated. And next is the glutamate hypothesis. Okay, this is the recent report that indicates the underactivity of the NMDA receptors. That is the uh, glutamate receptors, which is MDA receptors, which is responsible mainly for the negative symptoms of the schizophrenia. But however, there is no drugs that is available uh, to increase the activity of the NMDA receptors.
okay so with this pathophysiology we will start with the drugs for schizophrenia okay so we have already discussed the um, classification of antipsychotic drugs okay these are the phenothiazines okay these are the beta-refinones, these are the typical antipsychotic drugs, simulathiazanthines and heterocyclates, again they are the typical antipsychotic drugs, and then they are the atypical antipsychotic drugs. Typical antipsychotic drugs, they mainly block the D2 receptors, whereas atypical, they block the serotonin receptors and other dopamine receptors, and less, they less act on the D2 receptors. So again, sometimes you can be asked, okay, first generation and second generation antipsychotic drugs. First generation means all the typical antipsychotic drugs. Second generation are the atypical antipsychotic drugs. So let's start with the chlorpromazine as a prototype drug. So in the Brain, okay, in this, um, brain as antipsychotic action, okay, the mechanism of action of uh, this chlorpromazine or first generation antipsychotic drugs, they competitively block the postsynaptic D2 receptor in the mesolimbic system, okay, and also has been found to block presynaptic D2 receptor but lesser than that of the postsynaptic D2 receptors in the mesolimbic system. So, this is the action that produces the antipsychotic effect. So, chlorpromazine or the uh, typical antipsychotic drugs, okay, they mainly blocks the post-synaptic D2 receptor in the mesolimbic system and produces the antipsychotic effect. So, you can see in this picture, okay, this is the antipsychotic drugs and they goes and bind to the D2 receptor in the mesolimbic system, okay, and inhibit the action of dopamine, okay. So, that will decrease the intracellular response or it will decrease the symptoms of the schizophrenia. So symptoms like irrational behavior, okay, agitation, aggressiveness and psychotic symptomology are decreased uh, with the chlorpromazine, okay. Uh, then this stuff thought and behavior are also uh, gradually normalized, anxiety is relieved, okay. Then hyperactivity, hallucination, and delusions are also decreased. Then there is a sedative effect that is produced, which is again slowly there are uh, development of this is there is a development of the tolerance to the sedative effect. So next, the classical this the neuroleptics they also completely blocks the D2 receptor in the nigrostatal pathway, which mainly causes the unwanted extrapyramidal symptoms, okay. So in the brain, one is they blocks the T2 receptors in the mesolimbic system that will have an antipsychotic action, okay. Then on D2 blocking action in the nigrostatal pathway that will cause the unwanted extrapyramidal effect. Similarly, also they blocks the D2 receptor in the chemoreceptor triggering zone which shows the antiemetic effect, okay. and in the brain also, this chlorpromazine, they lowers the seizure threshold, which can lead to the, or which can precipitate the fits in the untreated epileptic patient. So these are the actions of the um, chlorpromazine in brain. Next action in the endocrine system, okay, um, by blocking the D2 receptor in the tubular infundibular pathway, okay, which causes the endocrine side effects like hyperprolactinemia, okay, increase the prolactin level, galacturia, and gynecomastia in male, okay. Also, other um, in, um, hormone secretions like ACTH, okay, adenocorticotropic hormone, gonadotropin hormone, okay then growth hormone and antidiuretic hormone are also decreased, okay. There is an impairment of the glucose tolerance which can lead to uh, increased uh, blood sugar level and can aggravate diabetes and also it has been found to increase the triglyceride level also. Autonomic nervous system, action on the autonomic nervous system, okay. It also has uh, this chlorpromazine drugs, they also have a uh, autonomic side effects 
due to the alpha blocking action and anticholinergic properties okay by which there is a high chances of uh, hypotension and anticholinergic actions due to the anticholinergic action it can cause dry mouth blurring of vision constipation and other anticholinergic effect other actions of chlorpromazine mainly it also has other local anesthetic properties okay it produces the hypotension due to both central as well as peripheral actions on sympathetic tone okay which slowly again develop the tolerance and also chlorpromazine have antiarrhythmic action now the pharmacokinetic property of the chlorpromazine the oral absorption of this chlorpromazine is um unpredictable okay the viability is uh, therefore low uh, there is more consistent effect are produced after intramuscular or intravenous administration these drugs are highly um bound to the plasma as well as tissue proteins having high distribution okay uh, the brain concentration of this chlorpromazine is higher than the plasma concentration this gets metabolized the repeated uh, administration there is a high chances of drug accumulation and the metabolites are mainly excreted in urine and bile even after stopping the drug for months adverse effects of the chlorpromazine okay so cns effect it can cause sedation in which there is a tolerance of the develop there, there is a development of tolerance slowly uh, some drugs okay this uh, antipsychotic drugs they can increase appetite and can cause weight gain neurological side effects mainly with the typical antipsychotic drugs okay uh, which can cause uh, extra pyramidal symptoms these are mainly seen with the typical antipsychotic drugs okay potency drugs like flufenazine haloperidol pimazide and other typical antipsychotic drugs okay so let's discuss about the extra pyramidal symptoms so extra pyramidal symptoms this mainly block um, due to the blocking of the t2 receptor in the nagrostatal pathway okay um which projects from the substantia nigra to the caudate nucleus and putamen okay so there are different symptoms that are categorized in extra pyramidal symptoms like parkinsonism okay Uh, acute muscular dystonia akathisia malignant neuroleptic syndrome and tardive dyskinesia so we'll discuss one by one okay so parkinsonism i think you know must be knowing now okay so um the symptoms of parkinsonism is again mainly are the rigidity team tremor okay hypokinesia a mask like uh, face and insufficient uh, or suffering type of get okay these are the major uh, main symptoms of the parkinsonism and it also it is because of the blocking of the t2 receptors which causes the disturbance in the dopamine and acetylcholine balance in the basal ganglia okay so uh, with drugs okay the symptoms of parkinsonism like symptoms occurs um between 1 to 4 weeks of the therapy okay so once the antipsychotic drugs has started Uh, usually in 1 to 4 weeks of this uh, antipsychotic therapy parkinsonism symptoms like symptoms can occur so treatment usually includes uh, centrally acting anticholinergic drugs like trihexyphenidyl okay uh, or also uh, it, it can be changed into the atypical antipsychotic drugs even okay to con- to prevent from the parkinsonism we can add the um, uh, antipsych antipsychotic drugs along with the anticholinergic drugs however uh, uh, though that levodopa is the main drug for the treatment of parkinsonism here in cases of drug induced uh, uh, parkinsonism like this antipsychotic drugs induce parkinsonism levodopa cannot be given because why why levodopa cannot be given anyone Yes, because the dopamine receptors uh, are blocked. Okay, so levodopa cannot act on those uh, 
um, receptors that is already blocked. So in this drug in this Parkinsonism, usually anticholinergic or central acting antihistaminics drugs can be gave, given. And also this levodopa can aggravate the schizophrenia. Next symptom is the acute muscular dystonia. Okay, so again, it, this is characterized by the spasm of muscles of tongue, face, okay, neck and back. And these symptoms usually occurs within few hours to first week of the therapy. Okay, most commonly seen in cases of children below 10 years. Here, again, the treatment usually is, uh, patients is treated with the anti histaminic anticholinergic drugs like promethazine and diphenhydramine. Akathisia, this is the condition which is again characterized by restlessness, feeling of discomfort, okay, apparent agitations, uh, as, uh, manifested as compelling desire to move about, but without anxiety, okay. Again, these symptoms uh, starts in between one to eight weeks. Here the treatment star, uh, usually starts with Zipam, or benzodiazepine group of drugs like dizepam and clonazepam. If not managed and treated, then again propanol can also be given to decrease the symptoms or change to the atypical antipsychotic drugs like quetiapine. Then there is a malignant uh, neuroleptic syndrome, which is life-threatening conditions. Okay. Uh, where there is a, patients are extremely sensitive to the extravenous side effects of the neuroleptic drugs. So here the patient, um, symptoms are hyperpyrexia, okay, muscle rigidity, immobility, tremor, <clears throat> then semi-consciousness. Uh, there is a fluctuation of the blood pressure and heart rate. Uh, then <coughs> increased myoglobin in the blood. So we have to manage immediately for this malignant neuroleptic syndrome, okay? So you, first of all, we have to discontinue the drug, neuroleptic drugs immediately, and we have to go with the supportive treatment, like giving antibiotic drugs for the fever, okay? And as for muscle uh, rigidity, dantrolene is given, okay? Which is the directly acting muscle relaxant, okay? And this dantrolene, it blocks the um, receptor in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which prevents the release of the calcium, okay? There is the rhinodine um, receptor um, that is present in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and that prevents the release of the calcium. So that will cause the relaxation of the muscles. Or also we can give bromocryptin in high dose. Bromocryptin, it is the D2 agonist drug. Next, extrapyramal symptom is the tardive dyskinesia. Okay, so uh, which again occurs in the late uh, state in, in the late phase of therapy <coughs> that is characterized by involuntary oral uh, buccal lingual dyskinesia. Okay, so like for example, there is a constant chewing, okay, pouting, puffing of cheeks, uh, lip licking and choreoathetoid movement. So there is abnormal involuntary movements that is seen in cases of tardive dyskinesia and it is mainly seen in the elderly women and again it's again due to the supersensitive of dopamine in stratum. Here again usually uh, they should, uh, patients should be treated by withdrawing the neuroleptic drugs or if the patient is taking any uh, antiparkin Sonism drugs or anticholinergic, uh, anti Parkinson anticholinergic drug that should be also stopped and to start with the dizepam. Okay, or again, we can go with the atypical antipsychotic drug like clozapine and olanzapine. So, that's the management for the tardive dyskinesia. So, the uh, extra pyramidal symptoms are the Parkinsonism-like symptoms, acute muscular dystonia, akathisia, malignant neuroleptic syndrome, and tardive dyskinesia. So, next is the autonomic side effects, okay? So, uh, these um, antipsychotic drugs, they have got the 
anticholinergic as um, property as well as it also blocks the alpha receptors so because of that there is a high chance of postural hypotension um, due to the peripheral alpha receptor blocker and um, vagal inhibition causing tachycardia okay so um, this um, symptoms are mainly seen in uh, cases of high dose low potency drugs like chlorpromazine and thiodazine the tolerance develops later okay with the continuation of the drug and other uh, autonomic side effects uh, because of the anticholinergic property it can cause dryness of mouth constipation and urinary retention other side effects are the endocrinal side effects causing hyperprolactinemia uh, so due to the dopamine receptor block um, blockade okay causing galactoria and female and gynecomastia and male okay due to the inhibition of release of fsh and lh causes and amenorrhea and and uh, an ovulation loss of libido uh, importance and infertility in males okay and this uh, endocrine side effects again are mainly seen with the typical antipsychotic drugs with phenol sorry uh, phenothiazines okay haloperidol and diazanthines thiazanthines okay then other side effects like elevation of blood sugar okay and triglycerides are mainly seen with chlorpromazine and thiazines hypersensitive reactions are mainly seen with cholestatic jaundice skin rashes urticaria and uh, contact dermatitis and photosensitivity sometimes the photosensitivity and corneal opacity are um, and retinal pigmentation are seen with the um, antipsychotic drugs. Okay, so these are the side effects of the antipsychotic drugs. So I think I will stop here today. Okay, and today tomorrow we'll start with the other antipsychotic drugs. So today you all just go through the actions of uh, antipsychotic drugs and the side effects of uh, antipsychotic drugs, okay? Mean the, mainly the extra pyramidal symptoms and other side effects, okay? Wait, okay, don't go. I have to take the attendance also. Mm-hmm.